Hi everyone, uh, today I'll be making some char cloth. Uh, how we achieve that is uh, by burning natural materials, um, cotton, linen, jute, maybe some sort of canvas, in an oxygen restricted environment. Ideally a little tin like this, you know, with a good tight lid on it so that uh, it doesn't allow air to flow in or out of the tin. What we do is uh, put a little hole in the top there so that um, the what's the word the volatiles can escape this would be methane hydrogen water in, in the form of steam and tar and that burns off and what it leaves behind is essentially carbonized material with a little ash well mixed ash mixed in so we'll have a look inside this tin now the, the materials I'm going to be using uh, I've got some some cotton here from a from an old favourite shirt. Everything has to be either cotton. If you use if you use synthetics, um, it'll just melt. So anyway, I've got some cotton there. I've got some cotton toweling. This is very good. This makes lovely fat um, embers. You know, you get a spark in that, and blow it up, you get a fire, no trouble. Your lovely big fluffy ember, and also a wrapped up sort of sausage. <laughs> of um, jute twine we'll see how that turns out the way to do is we'll put all that in our in our tin like so clamp the lid down and chuck it on the fire pop a couple of tent pegs through there drop him on and if you can see there's a little plume of smoke coming out of the hole at the, in the centre of the tin now. Stuff's uh, starting to burn off. That should catch fire soon. There we go. Put a bit more fuel in. Keep things going. I'll have a brew after this. Yeah, you can see that. Um, I don't know, there's a little flame right there. All the hydrogen, methane, and tars burning off. Okay, most of the flame from that uh, from the tin now seems to have stopped. So. I'll remove it and let it cool down and we'll have a look at what we've got. Well, a bit of an intermission, <laughs> get a brew on now while that's cooling down. Um, first time I've used this, uh, yeah, well known Swedish furniture retailer supplied this. Um, I haven't done anything to it whatsoever other than just rest a couple of uh, tent pegs on it and put them through it to, to hold the, uh, the tin out of the flames or <laughs> out of the embers. Um, that's alright, you know, you're a slave to it, constantly feeding it wood, but it does work. A bit smoky. Or oh, better yet, the old trivet system. Hmm, very good. I can just imagine a full English sizzling away on that. Lovely. Set for a cup of tea then. These hazel birds have just just started breaking. All lovely and fresh. Just about to kick off for another year. Fantastic. Gotta love it out here. Oh well, that's enough waxing lyrical. <laughs> Back to the job in hand. The tin's cool now, so we'll have a look at what's inside. I'll bring it close to the camera so you can see as I'm there. There we go. See if we keep focus. There we go. So there it is. Lovely roll of um, charred cotton, absolutely perfect. 
Um, here we have our lumps of charred uh, towel, bar towel. Nice fat little, um, give nice fat little embers they will. And I've not tried this before, but it seems to work quite well. It's that roll of um, jute twine. I'll give that a go. It looks fine. So that's all ready to take a, a low intensity spark, you know, from something like a flint and steel, or indeed um, solar. You know, a magnifying glass on a day like today, you have absolutely no trouble getting this going and starting a fire. So, char cloth. I might try it with some more natural materials a bit later on. I'm trying to find something else I can char, something you can forage, you know. Um, see how we get on with that. But for now, uh, there we are, char cloth. So, as usual, thanks again for watching. If you've enjoyed what you've seen, please subscribe, comment. Um, back again soon. Bye for now.